All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to Trailhead DX and for checking out this data management session. Today, we're going to talk about tools that can help you become a data management hero. So first off, you might have seen this slide before in various forms, the safe harbor, forward-looking. Don't make any purchasing decisions that's based on anything that's not already generally available for purchase. Although you might see a lot of cool stuff here. So data management hero. My name is Cornelio Cotafana. I'm a developer on the platform integration tools team at Salesforce. So in order to be successful with Salesforce, you need to have good data in your good data in your objects. And two tools that can help you out with that are the data loader and the data import wizard. If I could get a show of hands, how many people have used the data import wizard before? A lot of folks. Great. What about the data loader? Almost as many. Cool. That's good because both of them have their roles and both of them are available today and both of them are free and they can really help your lives out. So for those who have not used either of these tools before, if they're new to Salesforce in general, I'm going to go over some things about the two tools, when to use one versus when to use the other, and then give you guys a preview of something else coming down the line. So stay tuned. So first of all, the data import wizard is a user-friendly guide to help you quickly import objects. You can launch it from the various object homepages, from the setup, from communities as well. And uh, an example might be, let's say you have a, leads, a spreadsheet with leads or contacts, and you just want to get that data in there or update certain contacts. You generate your import file, upload it. So the screenshot of that is right here. Now, Data Import Wizard is a tool that's used for a variety of different user roles. You don't just have to be a power user or an admin. But if you are and you want to do more and you have a little bit more comfort level with Salesforce, you can use the Data Loader. The Data Loader, unlike the Data Import Wizard, is a desktop tool which you install locally and can be used for import, export, delete, and automation. So the Data Import Wizard is mainly it's only used for imports, so that's inserts or updates. The data loader, being the power tool, allows you more flexibility to do different kinds of operations. So uh, some example use cases of that might be an initial org import. Let's say you guys just sign up for Salesforce, and you have a lot of data from your legacy systems that you want to see in your objects. You want your users, your fellow employees, to be able to work with. You would generate that data, generate CSV files, and then you would use data loader to import that data, or, for example, if you needed to mass delete or export it to other systems, you would use Data Loader for that. So part of the UI for Data Loader is shown here. That's the initial screen. But then once you make your selections, uh, the other aspects of the tool will pop up. So if you're finding yourself wondering, which tool do I use, uh, we're going to go over the differences between the two to figure out which use cases is more appropriate. So first of all, um, the data import wizard, it's declarative. You launch it from the web browser. It's all clicks, not code. So it's a GUI interface. And similar for data loader, it, it does have a GUI, but it also has a command line interface, which not as many people are familiar with. So if you have admins or sysadmins or more technically minded folks that want to create uh, schedulable, schedulable jobs or recurring jobs, you can use the command line interface so that if you have files in a certain place generated every time, you could use Data Loader to just run it on a regular interval. But that's a little bit more involved. Also, where does the, where does the tool live? Again, Data Import Wizard can be accessed from the browser, so it's a cloud-based tool. Data Loader, you install it on-premise on your machine. Also, you have to keep in mind the, the volume of the data that you're using. So the Data Import Wizard, while it has a much more friendly hand-holding UI, it's more limited in scope, up to 50,000 records. But if you have hundreds of thousands of records or more, the Data Loader would be the better tool for that because it does the batching of the files on the back end underneath the, underneath the covers for you and does the import. And again, Data Import Wizard, it's quicker and more accessible to more folks, but it only does import. Data loader, import, export, delete. And also the objects that you want to import into. So the data import wizard supports the most common standard objects and all of your custom objects. So the common objects being account, contact, uh, lead, and et cetera. Data loader, any of object that's available on the public APIs and also that your user has permission to access, you can import, export, delete. 
Now, there's a feature that the data import wizard has, which is the option to turn off workflows and triggers. And the data, the data import wizard has that. The data loader does not. At the time that the data import wizard was built, it seemed like a good idea, but best practices have evolved. So actually, one of the best practices are that you do not turn those off. As convenient as they are, those rules are in place for a reason, and that's to maintain the integrity of the data in your org. You want clean data that makes sense, not just the import job that's done, so you done and over with so you can move on. Well, ideally, you want best of both worlds. And also, the ability to save your mapping. One of the important steps and a necessary step on any data import is mapping from your spreadsheet, the column headers you have, to the fields in the object or objects that you're importing into. And that can be really tedious for spreadsheets with lots of columns and objects that have lots of fields. So the data import wizard does not let you save that mapping, but the data loader does. So the next time you do an import, instead of going through that process again, you can just point to the import file, the mapping file, and it'll pre-populate that for you. And again, best practices. That's part of the reason we're here. I'm actually just going to go through these fairly quickly. This, the Data Management Hero talk is more geared towards the tools that are available to you, making you aware of those. But again, for best practices, I'll go through it kind of quickly. But if you have any questions, myself or my manager, Chef Ali, who's in the audience, or our product owner, Shintong, would be happy to field those questions for you. So again, uh, when you're doing an import for the first time into an object, it's good to start from a test batch, maybe one, two, or three records. And then after the import is successful, verify in the org that the data looks good as you intended. Also, keep the data loader up to date. Um, as Salesforce does its different releases, there are features added and new fields exposed to objects that may not be visible if you're using an older version of the data loader. Also, it's always good to keep your tools up to date for security reasons. Now, um, mass delete function on the data loader, if you do get into a situation that you're unhappy with, because uh, you have the list of records that were updated, you can do that, you can use that tool to generate a file, you can generate a file of the IDs that you want to delete, and then you can mass delete using that tool. Now also in the OR you have matching and duplicate rules, which can be configured through Clicks Not Code to help you decide what are duplicate records, what are not criteria that's specific to your org. Also, of course, if you're uploading records for other people besides yourself, you want to make sure the visibility settings are properly set up and that you, you, the user of the tool, has access to create child records for uh, somebody else's record, for example. And again, we recommend you do not turn off workflow and validation rules because that can lead to inconsistent data. All right, so I've talked a little bit about the data import wizard and the data loader two tools that are available today and are free and will make your job a lot easier for doing bulk operations. But we understand that we could do better and we're always trying hard to do better and to create a, a better, more efficient, more, a more useful tool for, to enable the success of our users and our admins, our trailblazers. So we've been working hard on a tool that combines the user friendliness of the data import wizard with the power and the flexibility of the data loader we wanted to not just combine the two, but we wanted to add additional features. And so here's where we, we step off of what's available today and are looking into the future of what we're, where we would like to go. We want to give you the tools so you can truly be a data management hero. So we'd like to talk a little bit about the data integration hub, which is what we've been working on to try to blend the best features of the two, as well as adding a whole range of other features. So here's a quick screenshot. I'm going to give you guys a demo in a little bit. But again, we want a simplified user interface that's cloud-based and cloud accessible. That gives you intelligent mapping, also the ability to save mapping templates and operations so you can automate future, so you can make future imports more easy, as well as schedulability and a, well, we'll get into it in a second. Take a little bit more. So in general, the, the problem areas and the features we're trying to target with the data integration hub are, again, envisioning the data loader in the cloud with additional features, more intuitive user interfaces, reusable import templates, which I've mentioned, schedulable jobs. Right now, if you want to schedule imports using the data import wizard or the data loader, you'd have to use the command line API of the data loader with a custom scheduling system or script that's developed by somebody on site within your company. 
And also, we want to put out a public data import API that will allow you even further customization of when and how to do your data management operations. And also, we want to be able to import directly from external data sources. Right now, the model of the two tools we've talked about is you have a spreadsheet that you generate through some process, and data comes from an external system, and you import that spreadsheet into Salesforce? What if you could import the data from one Salesforce org to another? Or what if you could export data out of SAP into your Salesforce platform, or go from your Salesforce platform into your legacy um, proprietary, your legacy Oracle system that your company wants to hold on to? We want to be able to enable you to do that, and we want to provide a framework for connectors that allow you to do that, as well as building your own custom connectors to data sources that we have not yet addressed or come to. And of course, in addition to just data import, we want to handle data transformation and aggregation. So that way, all your, all your effort for generating the data doesn't have to be outside of the platform. You don't have to have all these scripts or all this logic to generate the CSV file and then just do the import. What if you just have the data as it is, bring it in, and then define what kind of operations you want to do on it so that it matches the, the goal of how you use your Salesforce objects? So I'm going to give you guys a quick demo of the data integration hub. This is in closed pilot right now. We'd like to go into open pilot. And so if you have, any, if you have interest in participating in the pilot, please speak to Xin Tong, who is our product owner, after the talk. Because we'd very much love your feedback and your input and in helping us make this the best tool for your guys' needs. All right. Let me see if I can make this a little bigger. OK, so this is the development version of the Data Integration Hub. So I'm going to log in using OAuth to my org. So we see the Data Integration Hub landing page. And the feature set will grow over time. But right now, the the most important, the first use case that we want to handle is importing data. So we want to reach parity with the existing tools and then branch off and enable these other features. So first of all, what are you importing? We, have, we choose an object. For example, we're going to choose contacts. We're going to select a file. And we have the import mapping screen. So. Right now, the mapping is not done for you, but that's next steps, auto mapping, intelligent auto mapping. So we have a field on our contact object, our target object called last name. And these right here on the left-hand side are the columns in our CSV, trailhead DX CSV. So I'm going to choose last name for the mapping here. And I'm going to check, is this really what I want? So on the right-hand column over here, you have sample values that you could scroll through. These are values in the file. And I say, OK, yeah, that makes sense. And what am I going to map first name to? Well, I think, do I have a first name here? Well, let's search. So I should take a step back and show you, tell you something about the UI, first of all. We're showing you the CSV, the input file columns here. And in the middle column are the fields on the object you're going to import into. And then on the right hand, we have the sample values, as we've already seen. So you can choose. You can choose the target object. And also, you can map one CSV column to multiple Salesforce object fields. So let's do, we'll stick with description. A description right here. We have contact description. I think this is good enough to import right now. Again, looking through our samples, it looks good. If you have a very long uh, list of fields in your contact object or a lot of columns in your CSV file, you can use various filters. For example, the required fields, the unmapped fields, or all fields to help you narrow down the range of fields that you actually want to act upon and skip the ones that you don't care about. And again, you can search also by name to subset and filter to find what you need. So once the mapping step is ready, we're going to go ahead and do an import. So we click Import. Your import has started. Great. So if you want to see the bulk job for your job, you can click on this link. And if you have the access to it, you can view the bulk API job that was kicked off behind the scenes for the contact object, the number of records processed. 
And if you don't have access to it, you can at least copy this ID and give it to your admin if there's any problem with the job. So I did all this work to do the import mapping, the mapping of the fields. I don't want to have to do this every time. So I want to save this as a template. So you click Save, give it a name. All right, we save the template. We hang out for a minute. This might be the network connection here. And the wizard is done. But now if we go to templates, and you, if I have another similar file that I get and I want to do the same import, well, I find my import template over here. And I say, use template to do the import. And so you start again from the template that we saved. Let's say if we were choosing another file, in this case, I'll use the same one. We should see the mappings that we selected before pre-populated. And we do. So that's it for just a taste of the demo for the data integration hub. Again, this is very early stages, but we're very excited about the features we're going to add. And we would love to have your voice helping us guide us to which areas to tackle first. So let me jump back to my slides really quickly. So I want to tell you really quickly about the roadmap. So by June of this year, we're going to have our open pilot, which we would encourage you guys, our customers with voices and opinions, to participate. And we're going to have the end-to-end -end import, reusable, imp reusable templates that you saw, the public data import API, and also job monitoring. And for Dreamforce, our target is to have import job scheduling to make that easier so you don't have to use ad hoc systems outside of Salesforce as well as importing data from at least one additional data source and using bulk API v2, which has a lot of optimizations. Right now, it's using bulk API v1, just like the data loader and the data import wizard. And beyond Dreamforce, we have the vision for the connector framework to be able to access even more data sources as inputs and outputs, and also capabilities to drag and drop clicks not code, data transformation, and aggregation. So thank you very much for your time and your attention. There are a lot of other sessions here, so I encourage you to check them out. And again, if you're interested in the Data Integration Hub pilot, please speak to Xin Tong Zhang or Shefali, my manager here. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to raise your hand. We can pass the mic around. We have two minutes or so for questions. I think we have a question over here. Is there an add-on fee for, the, for this? It's a very good question, which I do not have the answer to, as I'm just building it, helping so, to and build this, it. And this, with like the MuleSoft acquisition, is this kind of in that same vein, or is this kind of making a bridge? Or It's also a very good question, but because the announcement and the deal is so new, unfortunately, I can't answer anything. If, you wanna, if you're not familiar with MuleSoft and you want to learn more, we, I think we do have a booth here as well as a press area. But thank you for your question. So the question is about the license. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, in terms of license and pricing, uh, as Cornelio said, it's still to be determined. But definitely, um, I can foresee that the first for, for, for the uh, importing feature to begin with is, is free. It's meant to enable versus to uh, monetizing. So there will be a majority of the functionality that's free for you. In the f yeah, in terms of which portion of it is pricing, it's still to be determined, but just most of it will be free. We have one more question on this side. The gentleman over here, right? Yes. No pressure. Yes, not. Uh, hi. Can we hi. assume it'll work like data letter today, where permissions are just like security level is determined by your actual profile in Salesforce for your running user? I'm sorry, I can't hear you very well. Can you bring the mic a little bit closer? I'll just kind of step down. Sorry about that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I was just had a question on security and access to this. So if I wanted a user that's not an admin to run a job based off a template, is that something that we could allow? So right now, the data import wizard gives various kinds of users access to doing imports. And 
right now the, the ability to import is driven primarily by the access that the user has to the objects themselves. So it'll be, it'll be similar. If they, have a, if they have access to those objects, they can do that. The actual permissions, if we want to give elevated access for certain situations, is still to be determined. But right now it's driven by the user profiles and the um, other permissions in the org. OK, yeah, that answers my question. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thank you very much.